Good morning, my dear children of class 9. So, first and foremost, I'd like to ask you, how are you? Because this is my first video after the lockdown and after three months of my leave. So, without much ado, I would like to go ahead with the chapter. And today, I shall be dealing with a very, very simple poem by James Patrick Kinney. And the name, the title of the poem is The Cold Within. So this cold within is basically a simple poem. It's not an extraordinary poem, but it's just a simple poem. Rather, it is a parable which has a moral in it. It talks about six different individuals, or rather six indifferent people who have a stick of their own, but would not wish to light the dying fire. So now, in order to know the reason why these people, they have, uh, they are preventing themselves from lighting the dying fire, let us move ahead with this poem. Six humans trapped by happenstance in bleak and bitter cold, each one possessed a stick of wood, or so the story stored. So as I had already told you all in the, in the introduction, that this poem is actually about, uh, it revolves around six individuals who actually happen to meet by chance, by accident, on a very bitter and cold winter evening. And these people had circled around a fire that was dying. And the, uh, and the one prominent thing that each of these individuals, they had in common was that each of them carried one log. And they held each of their logs very tightly clutched in their hands. So, now the next verse. The dying fire in need of logs, but the first one held hers back. Four of the faces round the fire, she noticed one was black. And the first individual that this poet discusses about is a woman. A woman who was prejudiced against one individual around that circle. And that person happened to be a black. And from here, what do we get? What idea do we get about her nature, about her attitude? Yes, she is racist. She has a very racist attitude. Because of which? Because of that very attitude of hers. She withdraws herself. She refrains. She immediately, without thinking, she immediately stops herself from renewing the fire for she does not want to provide warmth to that black person. Now, the second, third verse. The next man looking across the way saw one knot of his church and could not bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch. And the very next person who sat just beside this woman was a man who actually hated anybody for that matter anybody who was outside his community outside his religion and this man happened to be a person who was very very intolerable towards other people from other religious background because when he noticed that one person amongst those five individuals who sat along with him around that dying fire who also had a log in his hand when he noticed that one person was not from his religious community, he immediately stops himself for he does not want to benefit that person from getting the warmth for he hated him. So what kind of attitude once again do we see out here of this individual is that he is a bigot. Now the next verse. The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. Why should his log be put to use to warm the idle rich? And this person, this person, the third one, he, from his very, from this very description, from the very first line of this verse, we get, we get an idea, a very clear idea, that he comes from a very poor background. And the person that he hated in that group was the person who was extremely rich for he had none. He hated him because he was rich and he had none. He had nothing. So he did not want to, he did not wish at all to provide him any warmth. So he did not also renew the fire. 
The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. Why should his love be put to use to warm the idle rich? So in this verse, we are talking about a man who is extremely poor. And his class is defined by his tattered clothes, which means torn clothes that he was wearing. He had very little money to keep himself warm on the, in that cold winter night. So this man, since he hated the man, one man, one particular man who was out there who was extremely rich, he was envious of him because he had none. He did not have any. And so he hated and he was envious of this rich man. And because of this prejudice, he refrained himself, stopped himself from renewing the fire, the fire that was about to die. Now in the next verse, the rich man just sat back and thought of the wealth he had in store and how to keep what he had earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. Now this verse talks about another individual who also had a lot like any other who had, who had gathered out there. So this man happened to be an extremely rich person, a wealthy person and what preoccupied his mind was the concern that, concern especially about the safety of his wealth from that poor lazy man who was there, who was seated right next to him. Now in the next verse, the black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed from his sight. For all he saw in his stick of wood was a chance to spite the white. And this verse talks about a man who was black, whose features, whose color was dark, who was a black. And this man, he noticed that there was one man who was white. And the minute he saw that, that man was white, he started hating him because he actually really did hate him because of the difference in the color. And, you know, and this man, he was so deeply, he was so deeply blinded by this hatred against this white man that he failed to realize that adding that log into that dying fire would actually, would have saved his life too. But no, what he saw as more important then was to take revenge upon the white man. And the only revenge that he could take upon that white man was by not adding the log into the fire and not giving him any warmth. So in this manner, he wanted to punish him. He wanted to take revenge upon the white man. Yes. So now, next, the last man of this forlorn group. Now this forlorn group, as you can see out here, is an oxymoron. I want you, all of you to note that it is an oxymoron where contradictory phrases, uh, phrases have been used. Where forlorn means alone, lonely, and group, which is just the opposite. So why forlorn group? Yes, though it is very ironical that though there were six individuals, six people, they were seated around the uh, around the dying fire in circle, they were seated together, but yet they were lonely and sad. You know, lonely and sad, deeply blinded by their own respective prejudices. And so, the last man of this forlorn group did not accept for game. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. So this man, this uh, last man, last individual that we talk about, he used to play the game of give and take. He was a man who would give only if he would receive something from the other person, else he would not budge an inch. He would not extend any form of help in any form in or in any way. So this man was extremely selfish. The last man of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. So now, 
Before moving ahead with the explanation of this verse, I'd like to explain this phrase, forlorn group, which is an example of uh, oxymoron. Oxymoron where uh, contradictory phrases have been used. And so, what it means is that, you know, ironically, what we see out here is that though these six individuals, they sat in a group, but yet they were lonely in their own way, all blinded by their respective prejudices. They did not carry any form of friendliness or warmth towards one another because they were they, they hated each other. There was the sense of discrimination on the ground of racism, on the ground of uh, uh, religion, on the uh, ground of greed on all these bases, they hated each other and because of which they were refraining themselves from lighting the dying fire. So all these, because of all these prejudices, these people, they were lonely, though they were in a group. So the last man of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. And this man used to play the game of give and take. For he would give only if he would receive. He was extremely a selfish man and since none of the, those individuals, none of those individuals were willing to sacrifice their one log that they held tightly clutched in their hand, he too did the same for none of them were willing to light the, renew the fire. And so as a result, what happened? None of them, they survived. We shall see that in the next verse. The laws held tight in death still hand was proof of human sin. They did not die from the cold without, they died from the cold within. So, this last verse sets across a very powerful message. A parable as I had already talked about, about things that separate us. And what it talks about is that, you know, that the coldness of these men heart itself kind of proved no different from a death. The message here is so powerful that the poem took on a life of its own. This poem has very beautifully captured the futility and the stupidity of racism, discrimination, greed and bigotry. And what other message James Patrick Kinney wants to give us is that such kind of prejudice would only lead to self-destruction, which is also a very important and a major theme of this poem. Thank you.